Hello and today, Monday the 25th of May, we look at the life of the Venerable Bede, a church historian. The Venerable Bede was the first English church historian. He was a monk at the Northumbrian Monastery of St Peter at Wearmouth, which is today part of Sunderland, and of its daughter monastery St Paul's in modern day Jarrow. Bede is well known as an author and a scholar. He was born in about 672 in Northumbria and he died on this day, the 25th of May, in the year 735, near Newcastle. His most famous work is the Historia Ecclesiastica, Gentis and Gloria, the Ecclesial History of the English People, which gained him the title the Father of English History. Bede also wrote on many other topics, from music and metrics to scripture commentaries. Almost all that is known of his life is contained in a notice added by himself to his book, The Ecclesiastical History of the English People, which state that he was placed in a mon the monastery at Wearmouth at the age of seven, that he became a deacon in his 19th year and a priest in his 30th. He was trained by the abbots Benedict Biscop and Calford, and probably accompanied the latter to Jarrow in the year 682. There he spent his life, finding his chief pleasure in being always occupied in learning, teaching or writing, and zealous in the performance of monastic duties. His works show that he had at his command all the learning of his time. He was proficient in patristic literature and quotes from Pliny the Younger, Virgil, Lucretius, Ovid, Horace and other classical writers but it must be noted with some disapproval. He knew Greek and a little Hebrew, his Latin is clear and without affectation, and he is a skilful storyteller. Like all men of his time, he was devoted to the allegorical method of interpretation and was credulous concerning the, the miraculous, but in most things his good sense is conspicuous and his kindly and broad sympathies, his love of truth and fairness his unfeigned piety and his devotion to the service of others combine to make him an exceedingly attractive character. His works were so widely spread throughout Europe and so much esteemed that he won the name of the teacher of the Middle Ages. Bede became known as Venerable Bede soon after his death, but this was not linked to consideration for sainthood by the Roman Catholic Church. His scholarship and importance to Catholicism were recognised in 1899, where he was declared a doctor of the church and Saint Bede the Venerable. The most important thing about Bede is that without him we would know nothing about the church at that time and before. His history of the church in England is really the only one we have. So without him there would be a huge swathes of the history of the church in this land completely lost to us and as much as we learn about him in his work we learn about so much that has gone before him his book is still in print to this day it's a wonderful guide to the very beginnings of faith in this land and it is as i say still in print it's been in print ever since it was published, I believe, and, and new theological students come to it every year and their eyes are open to that wonderful history of the church in this land. Bede's biblical commentaries, in which he interpreted the Bible mainly as an allegory, applied criticism, and tried to solve discrepancies. They were extremely popular in the early medieval period being copied and spread along with Bede's reputation widely across the monasteries of Europe. This dissemination was helped by the school of Archbishop Egbert of York, one of Bede's pupils, and later by a student of this school, Alcuin, who became head of Charlemagne's palace school and played a key role in the Caroline, Carolingian Renaissance. Bede took the Latin and Greek of the early church manuscripts and turn them into something the secular elites of the Anglo-Saxon world could deal with, helping them accept the faith and spread the church. Bede's two chronological works, On Times and On the Reckoning of Time, 
were concerned with establishing the dates of Easter. Along with his histories, these still affect our style of dating to this day. When equating the number of the year with the year of Jesus Christ's life, Bede invented the use of AD, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. In stark contrast to Dark Age cliches, Bede also knew the world was wound. The moon affected the tides. And he appreciated observational science. It was in the year 731 or 732 that Bede completed his history of the church in this land. An account of Britain between the landings of Julius Caesar in 54 BC and that of St Augustine in 597 AD. It's the key source, as I said, on the Christianisation of Britain. A mixture of sophisticated historiography and religious messages containing details simply not found anywhere else. As such, it overshadows his other historical, indeed all his other works, and is on really one of the key documents in the entire field of British history. As I said, it's a really easy read as well, so I do, I do encourage you all to find a copy. B died in the year 785 and was buried at Jarrow before being reinterred outside Durham Cathedral. He was already renowned among his peers, being described by Bishop Boniface as having shone forth as a lantern in the world by his scriptural commentary, but is now regarded as the greatest and most multi-talented scholar of the early medieval era, perhaps of the entire medieval era. As we remember B this day, we remember someone who, whose life's work was to bring the understanding of Christianity and this land to those who came afterwards. We know so much about the building blocks of our church in this land by his work, and we give thanks for him this day. As we give thanks this day for the Venerable Bede and all that he did to make us aware of our history, we hear our reading today from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. So as we give thanks for the life of the Venerable Bede today and think about all that he gave us in our modern church, we hear the collect for this day. The God our Maker, whose Son Jesus Christ gave to your servant Bede grace to drink in with joy the word that leads us to know you and to love you. In your goodness grant that we also may come at length to you, the source of all wisdom, and stand before your face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen.